This is VOA News. I'm Marissa Melton. A U.S. Air Force fighter jet was observed shooting down a balloon off the coast of South Carolina on Saturday afternoon. VOA's chief national correspondent Steve Herman reports from Washington what the United States government termed a Chinese surveillance balloon had drifted over the country for days, prompting calls from Republican members of Congress and members of the public for the military to knock it out of the sky. President Joe Biden told reporters he had told national security officials on Wednesday that the balloon should be brought down as soon as possible, but he was advised it was better to wait until it drifted offshore so no debris could harm people or damage property. Biden complimented the aviators who carried out the mission on Saturday afternoon. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin in a statement says the balloon's flight over America was an unacceptable violation of our sovereignty by China. Chinese officials have said the balloon was a Chinese civilian research aircraft that had drifted off course. Steve Herman, VOA News, Washington. Chile's government called for international help on Saturday to fight the devastating forest fires ravaging thousands of hectares and killing more than a dozen people. Chile's interior minister said they're asking for support from Brazil, Argentina and Uruguay after reporting 22 deaths from the severe forest fires that have destroyed some 40,000 hectares in central and southern Chile. Dozens of wildfires blazing through the country caused the government to extend an emergency order on Friday as a scorching summer heat wave complicates efforts to control the blazes. Pope Francis, along with the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, and Church of Scotland moderator Ian Greenshields took part in an open-air ecumenical prayer vigil at a mausoleum for South Sudan's liberation hero, John Garang, on Saturday. This is VOA News. Dozens of Russian and Ukrainian prisoners of war have returned home following a prisoner swap. AP correspondent Karen Chamas reports. According to Ukrainian officials, over 110 Ukrainians were freed. They said the released prisoners of war included troops who held out in Mariupol during a months-long Russian siege on the southern port city. Others freed were Ukrainian fighters from the Kherson region and snipers captured during the ongoing fierce battles for the eastern city of Bakhmut. Russian officials announced over 60 Russian soldiers were freed from Ukraine following the swap. Some Russian prisoners came under a special category. Their release was secured following mediation by the United Arab Emirates. I'm Karen Chamas. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said on Saturday that the situation on the front lines in the east of Ukraine was getting tougher and Russia is throwing more and more troops into battle. Russian forces are slowly gaining ground in the Donbass region and circling the city of Bakhmut, north of, north of Donetsk, and battling to take control of a nearby road, which is a major supply route for Ukrainian forces. They're also trying to capture Vulodar southwest of Donetsk. Earlier in the day, Deputy Defense Minister Hanna Malyar wrote on Telegram that Russian efforts to break the defenses in Bakhmut and Liman had failed. Liman lies just to the north of Bakhmut. It was liberated, liberated by Ukrainian forces last October. A jury in the United States has decided Elon Musk didn't defraud in Investors with tweets in 2018. VOA's Tommy McNeil has more. The verdict by the nine jurors was reached after less than two hours of deliberation following a three-week trial. It pitted Tesla investors represented in a class action lawsuit against Musk, who is CEO of both the electric automaker and the Twitter service he bought for $44 billion a few months ago. In 2018, Musk tweeted that he had the financing to take Tesla private, even though it turned out he hadn't gotten an ironclad commitment for an aborted deal that would have cost between $20 and $70 billion to pull off. The verdict is a major vindication for Musk. Tommy McNeil, VOA News, Washington. East African regional leaders on Saturday renewed their call for an immediate ceasefire by all sides in the conflict in Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo that pits the country's military against a rebel group it has accused Rwanda of supporting. At a summit in Burundi's capital, Bujumbura, the leaders of the regional East African community bloc put out a communique calling for an immediate ceasefire by all parties. And Sri Lanka has marked its 7 75th independence anniversary on Saturday. As a bankrupt nation, the president has started to improve, uh, but says not all acute shortages are over. He said we've reached the point of destruction. Marissa Melton, VOA News. Please subscribe, like, or comment. Thank you.
Hi, I'm Patrick. I'm an American. I grew up in the U.S. I am a professional English language educator with extensive experience in teaching English, especially English for academic purposes, test preparation, and general English to university students and adults 